several days on the road, belongings packed up hastily. It's a story that many of these people have already experienced once before, when they left South Sudan as civil war erupted in 2013, shortly after the country gained independence from Sudan. If I'd had the choice, I would not have come back to South Sudan. I would have gone anywhere else, but all the roads were closed. Years ago, Lina fled South Sudan and settled near Khartoum, where she carved out a new life for herself. But when fighting broke out just next to her home, she had to throw it all away, taking just her two children with her. Her husband stayed behind because they didn't have enough money to pay for his journey. Her story is far from isolated. People used to say that South Sudan wasn't stable, so we decided to move and build a home in Sudan because of the instability. But now it's the same situation in Sudan. So what should we do? We don't know. We just don't know. Conditions at this camp are rough. Food is scarce, children are getting sick, and some don't have anywhere to sleep. Many hope they will be able to settle in a third country. Up until last month, more than 800,000 South Sudanese refugees lived in Sudan. Since fighting erupted in Khartoum, the UN Refugee Agency has registered more than 30,000 people crossing into South Sudan. More than 90% of them are South Sudanese. Actual figures could be much higher, with many people crossing via informal border points. <laughs> 